John Jones comes out and said uh, to Francis Ngannou, those haymakers don't work on me, send the contract. Now, there's a lot to unpack there. There really is because the quote that I just gave you came out about two hours ago. But if I was to back up 72 hours ago, I could give you a different quote by John Jones where he said, look, I'll do the heavyweight thing, but give me a catch weight for my first time. Make it 220. Give me somebody in the middle. Let me test the waters. I understand he's never going to get that catch weight. I understand that's not going to happen when you have a champion like John Jones. If he's going to leave one championship, he's going to go fight for another championship. I understand those things, but I do think that John is still giving us a message. And the message is pretty clear. And it's also very fair, by the way. If you want me to go take this risk, a one that I don't want to take, I am doing this because I'm being asked to, let me test the waters one time. If that's where his mindset was, fast forward three small days, and all of a sudden, not only is he willing to go to heavyweight, against the scariest heavyweight out there, he's also willing to take on the largest man in the division. I mean, Angano just weighed in four days ago, and he weighed in at 261 with a limit of 265 plus one. He's the limit. He's five pounds off the limit. He's the limit. You get it. He is the limit, not to mention the right way. So it was just, it, it's really tough to know what John wants by listening to John. It's really tough. Most fighters, it's pretty, it's pretty easy. You go listen to him. Okay, here's what he wants to do. Let's navigate within these confines, see what works for everybody. With John, it's very tough. When on Sunday, he wants a 220-pounder, and come Thursday, he wants the biggest guy in the division. I got no problem with it. I'm just saying there's not a whole lot of things that we can allow to hold up a John Jones fight, particularly John Jones' own opinion, because John Jones doesn't have an opinion. It just keeps changing. That's a hard fight for Ngano. I will tell you right now, that's a hard fight for Ngano. And Gano has one way to win a fight. It's a very exciting way, and it's a very impressive, and I would even call it frightening as a compliment, a frightening style, which is to come out rah, 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 and knock everything down in his path like a tornado and look around and all the trees are down. Okay. That's one way to get your hand raised for sure. But if you look at John Jones, come on, John, John Jones got every way to win a fight that there possibly is. John Jones go five rounds, no problem. Done it plenty of times. John Jones can win by TKO. He'll stretch your arm out. He'll choke your neck. He'll knock you down. I mean, John Jones can win a fight every single possible way that there is. So when you're looking at that fight, it's pretty straightforward. If you're picking Engano, then you're saying Engano's going to knock out John Jones. Real simple. John Jones has never been knocked down, let alone knocked out. Now, you can counter that argument by saying, well, he's never fought anybody like Engano. You'd be 100% true. 100% correct. All I'm offering for you is that's a hard fight for Engano. If you think that John Jones is going up to take on Ngano and he's just going to go get ran over, that's just, that's not what you're going to see. Particularly with the master of space that John is. I mean, John's very long. You have a lot of guys that are very long, but they don't know how to use their length. Talk about a reach advantage. Even if that comes down to the legs, which never does get discussed in the media, but that's a very real thing, particularly when you're talking about John. He's not only got this incredible wingspan, he's got incredible length in his legs. He'll kick you from across the ring. Hey, you ready? You ready? Boom. You just got kicked in the leg by John Jones. I mean, he will do these things. John will not just come out and think he has to shoot and take Ngano down. John will go out and trade with Ngano. That's just who he is. And he's great at protecting himself. And he's great at using that reach. I'm just offering for you, while I do not believe we're going to see that fight immediately, I do think that it's very real talk that John moves up to heavyweight at some point. I think it was more real talk five months ago when there was just nobody to fight in the 205-pound division that was interesting. If you're John, there's nobody that was interesting. All of a sudden, there's interest all over the place. I mean, all, I'm not sure that Glover just didn't become interesting again in a rematch. Obviously, Dominic Reyes is there. And one, one problem that John is going to have by not agreeing to Reyes and then calling out Engano, one problem he's going to have is he's not going to look courageous for calling for Engano. He's not. Because if they offer him a contract, oh, he's not going to sign it. So that, that's a little bit of a catch-22. He's playing a risky game of, I'm going to say it, and then I'm not going to ever be asked to do it. Okay, great. Play that one myself all the time. Great. What's on a byproduct going to happen is it's going to look like he really will do anything to get away from Dominic Reyes. And John's even come out and said, look, I haven't ducked anybody, and I will fight Reyes, but the UFC needs to make the risk worth the reward, which means hey, you got to give me some more money. It doesn't work like that, particularly in the time that we're in right now where they have openly lost one arm of their business, which is a live gate. For anybody to come in and try to negotiate right now is a scumbag move. 
When you're in an organization and times are tough, you back that organization. You do whatever is asked of you above and beyond. You do not come in looking for yourself when you can openly turn your head left and right and see one arm of the business is gone. I mean, it's just a wrong thing to do. You're not going to be able to do it. You're not in a position to do it. They're not in a position to accommodate. But now you're showing your hand of who you are, which is a very selfish guy. A selfish prick who might have a little case of the stupids. I mean, you'd have to have a little bit of a case of the stupids to come in and ask for money on a company who publicly just got a loan to bridge between this time and the next time when things get back on track. A company whose president has gone out and spoke publicly and said our biggest star, Conor McGregor, may have to wait until this thing is over because I don't want to give up a $20 million game with a guy. I mean, when all of the clues are right in front of you and then you go and ask for more money, you might have a little case of the stupids. Uncle Jill, Uncle Jill. There's no bad guy like Uncle Jill. Yeah.